Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Epcot. A whole bunch of Guardians of the Galaxy information has come out, including some new signage inside the park. So I wanted to come out and show you guys. And also we have dining reservations at Le Cellier. And this is one of my favorite places to get a steak on property. And it's been over a year since I've been here last. So I thought today would be a perfect day. Anywho, let's go do this. It is now 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been trying to come to the park since 12, but it's been raining all day. It's been a very stormy day. So hopefully the rain stays away so we get to enjoy a little fun at Epcot. Since I'm getting a little bit of a late start to the day, I definitely need to get me some coffee. And one thing I love about Epcot is they have a Joffrey's right outside the park, well, right outside the entrance. So you can actually grab a coffee to take in with you. And I think Animal King is the only other place that has like a coffee spot before you actually go in. So we're gonna, we're gonna get some Joffrey's. Seriously, I love the fact that they've got a little Joffrey stand right over here. Because like when you go to Magic Kingdom, you have to head on in. And when you go to Starbucks on Main Street, it's usually super busy and there's never a line here. Let me know in the comments, are you guys Team Joffrey's or Team Starbucks? I used to like Joffrey's a lot more because it was more affordable, but this is a $6 coffee right here. It's kind of what I would have paid at Starbucks, so I feel like the prices are right there, but they do have a Walt Disney World 50th anniversary blend, and that's pretty fancy. I can't wait to see what the wait times are gonna be like today. It looks like Spaceship Earth is a five minute wait or a walk on. You're basically just walking right in. But all the other attractions, it's been kind of slow here for the first beginning week of April. I've seen definitely lower wait times than March. Yesterday, I was at Hollywood Studios and I saw Rise of the Resistance with a 60 minute wait time. And that is pretty phenomenal. That's the lowest I've seen it since probably 2022 since, since the beginning of the year if you guys notice right outside the creation shop they added signs now that point you in the direction of guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind and disney announced that it's actually going to be opening may 27th and i'm so excited they're also doing annual pass holder previews and cast member previews but they didn't announce the dates the only dates that they did announce are for d23 gold members and it's actually going to have may 15th and it's a separate ticket event you have to purchase it so you have to look under the D23 Gold site to actually get all the purchasing details. But May 15th, hopefully I can get there. I am so excited for Guardians of the Galaxy. I want to be here for the annual pass holder preview for opening day. And if I can get the D23 Gold, I definitely want to be here. I think it's $35 and it includes, I think, a dessert party or a viewing area for Harmonious. So I'm really going to be trying for that. I think they go on sale April 12th at like 1 p.m. So I'm gonna try my best, fingers crossed. I'm also very excited to eat inside Connections Cafe. They released the menu already of some of the things that they're gonna be serving, and it all looks amazing. They have a meatball flatbread pizza. Of course, they're gonna have Starbucks in there, and I think that's gonna open up probably the same time Guardians, or maybe even before, because it looks like it's almost ready to go. I know that as soon as the pass holder and the DVC previews uh, come available, it's gonna go so fast. You have to be like sitting there and just waiting. I, I'm not really good with online things, so I'm really hoping I get it. It looks like Test Track is a 70 minute wait, but it did just reopen because of the rain. So a lot of people probably just flooded right over there. And because it's been down, the lightning lane probably got all backed up. Since we have a little time before our dining reservation at Le Cellier, I don't think we're going to head right back to World Showcase. Maybe ride a ride here in Future World and then make our way over to the Canada Pavilion because that's where Le Cellier is. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. Like I said, this is one of my favorite places to get a steak on property. And it's definitely in my top five. It has a, an amazing ribeye there. It has a bison strip loin. So many good options. But let's ride a ride first. Even on a gloomy day, it is beautiful here in Epcot and hopefully those dark clouds stay away it's so funny because it's the buildings kind of like blending in with the skyline right there do you see it that is so cool and uh, yeah maybe a nice sunset over by uh, world showcase later on 
I think before we make our way over to World Showcase, I thought it would be fun to journey into imagination with Figment. I haven't rode Figment in a while, and it's so funny because I called it Figment, but like the name of the attraction is Journey Into Imagination. Do you call it Journey Into Imagination or you just say Figment? Like, let's go ride Figment, you know what I mean? I didn't think we could beat the five minute standby wait at Spaceship Earth, but there's not even a wait time for Figment. There's not even a wait time posted, so it's probably just a walk on. Also, I never noticed that the little clock here for the lightning lane actually says citizen on it. So it's a citizen watch. Oh yeah, look at this. This is the good thing. Sometimes when it rains, a lot of people leave the parks, so it leaves attractions kind of like as a walk-on. So now this is two attractions so far today that we've come across that uh, it's just been completely walk-on. And I like that. One time I actually had a photo back here. It was really cool. I wish they'd still let you do that because I would love to get a new one. And uh, I don't know what it says in that book there. As I'm walking through, nobody's coming in behind me. Look at that. I mean, I know Figment isn't like the most popular attraction, but it's still kind of funny that there's nobody coming in. Like, nobody's coming to ride Figment right now. I might ride it by myself. We're heading on in. Today's theme, how to capture your imagination. Thank you, guys. Bye. Have a great day. Oh, oh, oh. I'm Dr. Nigel Channing, chairman of the Imagination Institute. On your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, come on, go do! Your ears are hearing a thousand thoughts can start appearing, and each of us imagines different things from just the sound. Your mind has wings. Anything can happen. Chocolates, cinnamon, vanilla, coffee, cookies. Oh, is it gingerbread cookies? There's a little gingerbread man on there. Lots of good smell. Rose. It's always a good time to use your imagination. Jasmine. So let the good times roll. You win one sample. That smells good. There's even a hot popcorn one. You see it right there, hot popcorn. Figment is always fun to ride for me. In fact, every time I ride a ride, I always try to look for things that I've never noticed before. So like I never noticed there was a hot popcorn scent in the smell room, and I thought that was kind of cool. And when you're looking for things that you normally don't look for, it always keeps it exciting and fun. So like I could ride Figment like thousands of times and probably still find something I've never knew or never saw before. As we're making our way out, I wanted to point out the Soren merchandise that they have available. I've always said I wish they had more Soren merchandise because I love Soren. And it's kind of cool. Like, I like this shirt right here, but I don't like the fact that this is the back and this is the front right here. And if this was a spirit jersey, if they made a Soren spirit jersey, I probably would own two. One to actually hold and cherish, the other one to just wear in the parks every time I come to Epcot. But they don't. Now that we've gotten the figment business taken care of, time to turn our attention to the steak business and make our way over to World Showcase. I am so excited. Like I said, I'm pumped for this steak. I'm pumped for just some good food and some poutine too. I thought it was gonna be much darker once we got off the ride, but it still looks a little gloomy, so there's not gonna be a nice sunset today. I feel like it's just gonna be gloomy until dark and that's it. Today I'm rocking an Avengers Roosevelt and it has the silhouettes of all of our favorite Avengers and villains too. You got a little Loki, Baby Groot on there, Scarlet Witch, all of them and I love it. <laughs> it is a really cool shirt. 
once we get down in the restaurant it's going to be very dark so i'm going to do my best to film and i have a feeling once we get out of the restaurant it's probably going to be dark and it's probably going to be raining because those clouds look like they're just floating right towards us so i'm glad we're going in now i might have felt a raindrop at this moment the last time I was here, I remember I started doing my Eating Around World Showcase adventure where I went around and I ate at every restaurant that was open uh, in World Showcase and I ordered things that I normally wouldn't order and uh, it was a really fun experience and when it came to Le Cellier, it was kind of hard because I would have eaten everything on the menu here. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to get this time, but we're going to take a look at the menu. But here it is. Isn't it so pretty down here? And it's so quiet and peaceful. I feel like everything just got more quieter and I can hear the music. I don't even want to be talking right now. I just want to stare at the flowers. Here is a look at the menu and they have a really nice menu display. Like it's all lit up and fancy. I really do like it. And like I mentioned before, they have so many different things. I'm not even too sure if you're gonna be able to see it, but I wanna show you outside before we get in because it's gonna be really dark in there. They have a bison strip loin for $52. They have a ribeye steak for 57, a New York strip steak for 52, the filet, Le Cellier, the Le Cellier filet, this is like their popular item for 59. They have sustainable fish, steamed Asian impossible dumplings, a lot of good things. So I'm not too sure, we're gonna have to think on this. I'm gonna have to sleep on it. Baby, baby, let me sleep on it. <laughs> When it comes to steaks, I'm a sucker for the ribeye. I love ribeyes, it's just my preferred cut of meat. I would take a ribeye over a filet any day. So it's gonna be hard not to get the ribeye. I think I got it last time, but at the same time, I do wanna try something different. All right, now we have to head on in here. I'm so excited, I love this restaurant. But like I said, it is very, very dark, so we'll do our best. This is the waiting area right here and we'll soon make our way down to the dining room and it's actually kind of a small dining room but it's like it's really nice it's very very quiet it's very dim light and it's a really nice setting. Here is a look at the restaurant itself and like I said it's a little bit dark down here. I like how they have artificial candles as the only source of lighting but I like it. It's very very nice it's, it's, a, it's a good dining setting. Well, this is kind of a really cool treat. It looks like they have a special turning red menu and it's actually inspired by the movie. So they have shrimp and pork dumplings. They have a beef stir fry poutine and then a citrus and vanilla chiffon cake. And it's all from the movie Turning Red. That's really, really cool. I had no idea that this was gonna exist. And then it's kind of like a little surprise. I think I'm definitely going to be trying some of the stuff from the Turning Red movie. I think that is so cool. Definitely the shrimp and pork dumplings. That's something I really do enjoy. Maybe I'll get that as an appetizer. And then maybe the citrus vanilla chiffon cake as my dessert. And since I'm trying something new as an appetizer and a dessert, that means I kind of feel comfortable getting what I normally love to get which is the ribeye steak with a little lemon scented fingerling potatoes, caramelized onions and roasted shallot whiskey butter. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so I ordered the shrimp and pork dumplings. Then I got myself a ribeye Pittsburgh with uh, the enhancement. You can choose an enhancement and I went with the maple whiskey glazed Brussels sprouts. I think this is the exact meal I got last time, but I loved it so much. So we're trying two new items, including the dumplings and the cake. So I feel good about it. I appreciate the fact that they use real candles here. That really is fancy. And we got a complimentary bread service. And this is a fancy bread service because it has three different types of bread. And these these are all different breads from the different areas of Canada and like Yukon for the sourdough right here and also I found out that uh, Canada actually holds the second largest Oktoberfest so they have a pretzel roll here other than Germany and I think that's kind of fancy and then some maple butter so lots of good bread offering We've got a lot of food coming out, so we're not gonna be eating a lot of the bread, but I do wanna try a lot of it. Like, I remember this pretzel bread was actually really good, so we're gonna have a little pretzel bread and a little bit of the maple butter. A little maple butter pretzel bread. Joke's on me. I said I wasn't gonna eat all the bread, 
but then here I go eating my last bite of the pretzel roll. God can't help it. It was so good, but maybe just little tiny like pieces of this though. Just a little bit. Here are the shrimp and pork dumplings and I love this because you know in the uh, movie uh, her father is actually a chef so like a lot of this food is inspired by what he would be making and it's cool that it's here. I can't wait to dive into it. They look really good. I don't know how many they give you though. Oh three. So three little dumplings and I think it was $16. That probably not the best price but it does have uh, crispy noodles on top. All right, we're gonna try these. I'm gonna cut it in half though because I'm not too sure what's in the center there. <laughs> All right. Ooh. They kind of falling apart here. Here it is. That's the first uh, dumpling here. Okay, that's good. I really like the sauce with these and I like the fresh uh, dumpling. But I don't taste the shrimp yet. I think I only have gotten pork, so I wonder if one's pork, one's shrimp, one's a pork again. Like, if they only give you three, I don't know where the shrimp would be. Yeah, I'm a little confused. I don't, I don't find the, uh, I'm not finding the shrimp in there. And I'm, I'm doing it with a fork, which wasn't the best way to do it. I should just pick it up and bite it. Because if you cut into them, you kind of ruin the dumpling. But it's good. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. So here we go, we're gonna try the second one. I really do love these. I just wish they'd give you more than three. That's the only downside to it. And they said that I think they end, I think it ends in May. So you can only get them for the next couple of uh, weeks here and then it'll be done for. And also the uh, crispy noodles kind of have a little kick to them, but they're fun to eat. I feel like since there was only three small dumplings, maybe I should try the special turning red poutine too, because it's going away. So like I figured it might be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yep, I think I decided on getting the beef stir fry poutine because I really want to try it and it's fresh cut french fries, Canadian cheddar, stir fried beef, gravy and Asian flavors. And if it's going to be something that's only going to be on the menu till May, like you never get the chance to get it again, so might as well, you know? I think I'd rather get that than get the dessert. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like that's something more unique wise. I really think I have done did it here, guys. I ordered <laughs> the poutine and they brought out the ribeye and the crispy Brussels sprouts. And this is the biggest cut of ribeye I think I've ever seen. And the char is perfection. Look at that. Holy moly. I don't remember getting a ribeye steak from here like this last time. This might be out of this world. This might be, oh my, I don't even know what to say right now. I cannot wait to cut into it because the expectation is higher than ever. Honestly, the last time I was here, guys, this steak was nowhere near this size, and it did not look like this. Like, this is something, I, I mean, I don't even know. I'm cutting into it now. We're gonna get that cut shot. You know how it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. First bite. Oh boy, guys. This steak has me rethinking everything. Honestly, this is phenomenal. Look at this fat right here. Amazing, yeah, amazing. Like oh yes, Wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I'm not gonna rank this steak until we're done because I need to talk about it and this is, this is something else. Because I, you know, if I can guarantee that I would get this steak every single time that I come down here or come to the cellier, then I think it would be my number one. But it still might be actually. I have never encountered a cut of meat like this. It's cooked just unbelievably amazing. And the shallot whiskey butter, I'm cutting it into the tiniest little pieces and it melts in my mouth because I don't want it to end. I just want to keep on snacking on it. And we still have a stir fry like poutine coming out and I don't even know what to do. Mm. 
now we gotta dive in to the uh, the maple glazed Brussels sprouts. Look at that, nice and crispy. I don't think these are gonna be better than polite pigs, but they look like they're pretty good. Let's give the Brussels sprouts a go here. Mm. Phenomenal, holy moly. Yep, and this is where I realize I made a big mistake. Look at this, look at this, why? Oh my lord, <laughs> I am never gonna be able to eat all this food. Oh, it's definitely, some of it's gotta come home with me, but the ribeye, that's not coming home with me. I can tell you that right now, I am gonna enjoy every single bite of that. We have to take a break from the steak, but I really don't wanna take a break because we have to try the stir-fried poutine and look at how big this is. Look at the portion they give you. Now, this I believe was like $16, $17. Not too sure, I really wasn't paying attention to the different price changes, but that is a lot. All right, here we go. We're gonna dive in here. We're gonna grab some of that beef, some of the french fries, a little bit of the gravy, and there's also, uh, like Asian sauces in there too. So there's a lot happening. There's gonna be a complex flavoring here happening. So here we go. I have to be honest. I really don't know what's happening here. Like it all tastes good, but I don't know if it tastes good together. Like the stir fry, the gravy with the Asian sauces, everything mixed together. And then the cheese over here, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. The stir fry can get a little bit cold, but I don't want this sitting. <laughs> I'm diving right back into it. It's going down. I'm finishing every single little bit of this. We are definitely going to have an extensive debriefing after this meal because so many things are happening that are just phenomenal. Like getting a little bit of the lemon scented fingerling potatoes and a nice chunk of beef there all in one bite. All right, now we're gonna dive into this real fatty section right here. And this is where it has the most char. Like I was impressed with the char when it came out right here. And look at this, oh my Lord. This is the best bite, I've been saving it. I already missed my steak. I wish it was still here. <laughs> I got my Brussels sprouts left. I'm gonna eat my Brussels sprouts now. What did I tell you guys? There was no way that steak was making it out of here alive. <laughs> it was so good. And now we gotta get our bread and we gotta soak up that last bit of juice. Gotta get it all good. That is the way. Well, I don't think there's any possibility I could even think about getting a dessert. I am so full and satisfied right now. That steak, phenomenal. We'll talk about it more once we get outside, but we gotta finish up and settle up here. That was too good. Oh boy, we need to recap here. That steak was phenomenal. Actually, everything was phenomenal, except for the stir-fried poutine. I mean, it was a really cool concept, but I don't think it mixes well together. In between, like between the gravy and the Asian sauces and like the Mongolian beef style with French fries, it really didn't blend well. But the steak was cooked to perfection. The cut was amazing. And honestly, it, it might be one of the best steaks I've ever had. And I don't know, because like I said, I've, I've had the steak here before and it was good, but it was not that good. Like that was, like amazing so I, I i wanna say i wanna rank it high i wanna rank it high because it really was one of the best steaks but it was also super pricey because it comes with the little fingerling potatoes uh but then the brussels sprouts which were amazing those were an additional ten dollars so like now you're looking at 67 dollars just for potato brussels sprout and steak not including the other sides and stuff like that uh, and I feel like flying fish might be a little bit more on the affordable side. Uh, Shula's is a little bit more expensive because all you get is the steak. Like that's all you get is the steak price. So I don't know, I'm torn. Flying fish was really good. Shula's was really good. This was really good. I might just keep it right in the three spot. Like, but like if I can get that steak every single time exactly the way that it was right here tonight, which is almost impossible because there's never the same cut 
You know what I mean? And the, the whoever the chef, whoever the chef was, he was on point. I would say that would be my number one steak, and I would be their best repeat customer if I could just get that every single time. Phenomenal. The whiskey butter, oh, too good. I'm gonna be thinking about this well after. I'm gonna be thinking about this for a while. Now we need to be making our way out, and boy, oh boy, do I have a belly full of meat and potatoes. <laughs> and look how beautiful it is over here at night, even. And it's, I'm shocked because it's still kind of like a little daylight out. Now it's time to do the hardest thing, and that is make our way back out to the front of the park. <laughs> I mean, I am super full, but I think it would be fun to end the night maybe by taking a slow ride in a time rover and uh, hit up Spaceship Earth. Kind of nice to come down a little bit, digest a little bit, and then we'll skedaddle out. Hopefully before fireworks actually starts, because I've been getting out of Epcot before the fireworks end, because there's a lot of construction and traffic gets backed up pretty bad. So we definitely want to get out of here before the fireworks end. As I make my way up to Spaceship Earth, I wanted to stop and show you my little hedgehog here. And I want to say thanks to my little friend who gave it to me. I think it is so cool and I'm going to definitely keep it forever. Put it in my little pocket. I got a hedgehog in my pocket. It is 8.38 so we have 22 minutes. Well, technically we have... 42 minutes because I think Harmonious is a 20 minute show before the fireworks end and then we're gonna get stuck in the traffic and I really do want to ride Spaceship Earth so hopefully we're timing this right. Looks like we're lucking out here too and there's nobody waiting to go in. Actually there's nobody waiting to go in. I mean you have just these people that are walking in right now but that's about it. We could probably stay in there for a second. Uh oh it's about to get very bright here. I love it when Spaceship Earth turns on like that. How miraculous. Shocking though, because it still says it's a 15 minute wait. 15 minutes. Oh well, I think we'll have time. There we go. Fastest 15 minute wait ever right there. <laughs> and there's nobody behind me. That's twice tonight. That's crazy. We're just gonna sit back and relax and oh, think about that steak. Remember how easy it was to learn your ABCs? Fact the Phoenicians. They invented them. so we made it just in time wow I never really saw the fireworks like this from out here before but it does make like a little hidden Mickey almost identical to Soren you just gotta wait for the right burst to actually get up high enough that's really interesting and 
with that, I think we are done here. I can hear the fireworks going off, so we need to get going. Uh, it was such a fun night. Like seriously, dinner was amazing. Coming here and just hanging out at Epcot, not getting rained on. We avoided all of the storms, so we're very lucky. And uh, just enjoying life. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.